That was going green, Mary Go. All right, folks. How you doing? Okay. Um, so I've got um, I've got paint drying on a little project there. Um, rather than just watch it because that'd be quite boring wouldn't it uh <laughs> i'm gonna get another little job out of the way thought i'd bring you along for the uh for the ride and maybe maybe it'll be useful for some of you basically what i want to do is build some uh build some wall mount brackets uh for bicycle storage yeah so each bracket's going to hold one bicycle um i've seen a design i like online um it basically consists of well, three brackets per bicycle. Uh, there's 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 one one fork that bolts at the top, and the pedal of the bicycle sits in there. And then there's one bracket for each tire to rest on. Yeah, um, these are available about fifteen quid. Uh, looking at the reviews, they seem to be a little bit a little bit lightweight and easily bent. Um, so probably only good for light bicycles. Uh, I only want to put light bicycles on the wall anyway, not the old clankers, so um, we'll build our own. I've got the paint out anyway, we'll put a bit of paint on them, you know, make them nice, and uh, and what? Make them out of slightly, slightly thicker metal, probably. I don't know what the uh, commercially available uh, brackets are made out of, but we'll use one and a half mil mild steel.
Okay, so we got all our, our pieces uh, cut out, drilled, all the hard work's done, um, edges taken off nice and smooth now-ish. <laughs> um, and a slot here for the pedal axle to sit in. And now we need to fold them. So we want to end up with something like this for the for the for the axle bracket. Yeah, this one if you can see, I've gone slightly less than 90 degrees on this angle. Yeah. So the bike's going to be sat at a little bit of an angle anyway, but also um, you know it's gonna it's gonna stop the the pedal riding up over this as well because this angle here is less than 90 degrees. Yeah. So I'm just gonna stick it in the vise and got my my raw rawhide hammer. If you've seen my dump truck videos, you know I, I built a um, sheet metal folder, but that thing, it weighs half a ton, <laughs> even if I take it down to three pieces. It would take me longer to move it into my shed and set it up than it will just to uh, use the bench for us. over to the, the copper end right the copper side of the hammer right at the end there just to get a bit of a crisper fold um, there we go folded in different directions that's important otherwise it's going to make it very awkward to get uh, get our fasteners through these holes and into the wall Okay, so if you're using a bench vise to fold sheet metal, whether it be alley or steel, doesn't really matter, um, uh, or copper, or any of the other foldable materials out there. <laughs> uh, well, there's a couple of ways of doing this. You can either you can either use a bit of angle iron. That's probably the best way, just to get a bit of angle iron that's at least the same width as your material, or two bits really and use them as makeshift vice drawers. I'm not going to do that. It's not a particularly thick bit of metal here. Um, I'm just going to shift it backwards and forwards in the vice drawers. So we'll... Uh... Okay, so as you can see here, all I've done is create a bit of a uh, bit of angle, yeah. And you could uh, you could absolutely definitely just use a bit of angle iron. It'd be much quicker than making your own little pieces up like this because it's just two cuts and a few holes, no bending, no tidying up the long edges. But um, I pad the sheet metal out anyway, and uh, it's a bit of bit of a um, bit of an off cut of sheet metal. So we're doing the whole thing in 
sheet metal. I've just got another five of these to do and then that's all the fabrication work done. Okay, so I've got all my uh, all my bits and bobs folded up. We've got six plain angle brackets here. These are for the wheels to sit on and three pedal brackets. So we've got enough brackets, nine in total, three per bike. We've got enough enough brackets to do three bicycles, haven't we? Okay, I'm going to throw some paint on these now. Um, whole reason I'm doing this job now is just to pass the time whilst I'm waiting for other paint to dry. I've got paint in the gun, so I'm going to use my gun. Um, obviously, use whatever you like. You don't even have to paint them, I suppose, if you're indoors. If you like that, uh, if you like that industrial look, you can just uh, let them go rusty, can't you? So I'm not even going to bother showing me that. Not even going to bother showing. And not even. I'm not. Never mind. Oh, I'll catch you in a minute. Bye bye. Right then, folks. We're back in the bike shed. Um, We've got to figure out where we're going to put this bicycle on the wall. Yeah, I, I don't want it right up against the door, um, but you know, it's going to make my life easier if I mount it on this brick wall. So, um, I'm going to take the lid off my pen before I pick the bike up, otherwise we'll be in trouble, won't we? I'm just going to mark where the pedal comes to on the wall. Uh huh. Oh, alright. Okay. So, I got my brackets painted. Um, paint's not as nice as it could be, but like I say, the only reason I did this now was to uh, use up the last little bit of paint in the gun. There's some funny things going on with this light, aren't there? I've got no light in here, so I'm using uh, using work lamps, but um, yeah, they didn't come out too badly. Uh, presentable enough, you know? A bit knobbly bobbly though. But hey ho, um, so let's get this uh, the pedal bracket mounted first. The one with the cutout, this is the one for the pedal. Yeah? And I might put a little bit of pipe around that, but I'll do that later. You know, if you've got um, extra fancy pedals or something, then uh, a little bit of PVC pipe slit lengthwise and then placed on here would be nice. But like, my bikes aren't showroom condition anyway, so it doesn't really matter too much. Not for me anyway, but. You know, a lot of people spend a lot more money on their bikes than I do, so you know that might be something to consider. So I'm gonna mark my three holes. There we go, nice and easy. And to attach these brackets to the wall, I'm gonna use uh, these Timco fasteners. Timco! Uh, they're basically they're basically like pop rivets for brick, you know. They're really good, really quick, easy fasteners, and they're pretty strong. Um, certainly stronger than raw plugs, um, and a lot quicker than anything else. So we're going to use these. I'm pretty sure they'll have enough enough strength. What are they called? They're Timco. Timco's the manufacturer. Uh, nail in anchors. They're called. Um, but they've got a head on them, so we, we use the same 6mm hole through our brackets as we do into the wall. Hammer. How are we down? We just get the bike out of the way so we don't get it covered in brick dust. to put these fasteners in is, is literally uh, stick them in the hole and hit them with a hammer but <laughs> it looks like the uh, I obviously put a heavy coat of paint on these and um, it's made the hole a bit tight for the fastener I might just get a drill and open these up I think the masonry drill will work 
Oh yeah. Clean the paint off. There we go. You stick that one in the hole. And then hit it with a hammer. I'll get the others in first though. Just in case there's difficulties lining it up. Go on. Now the only thing with this is uh, you kind of need to be able to get a clean swing on the on the head of these uh, nailing anchors. So you know if I'm finding I'm hitting the the bracket a lot, I'll just get a, a piece of metal that I can hit rather than knocking all the paint off. Oh, like that. I'm gonna get a lump of metal. Solid. Let's stick the bike up there, that's what we've got to do next anyway to figure out where we want to put the brackets for the wheels. Okay. Alright. Okay, I should have picked up the pen for it, is this? isn't meant to be taking any of the weight um, that's that's meant to be intention I suppose it's going to be pulled away from the wall and the uh, the wheel brackets are the ones that will be in shear if you like I'll just get those those drilled and banged on okay so we've got all the brackets on the wall again sorry about the light in here um, but I mean this is this is probably one of the uh, one of the, the primary pros for doing your bicycle wall storage like this um, really does take up minimal space on the wall when the bicycle's not there, you know? Uh -oh. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's at eye level, that's, that's perhaps not the best thing in the world, but and you know, some of the bike storage have big hooks coming out of the wall which are going to be even less conducive to a happy cohabitative environment with the hooks I suppose I don't know what I'm talking about now either way uh, I haven't actually put a bike up here yet this will be the first time and oh my goodness it doesn't work <laughs> all right I've got yeah I had a handlebar hooked on the uh, hooked on the um, <laughs> what do you call it hooked on the channel of the shed up there but either way, there we go, bike on the wall. Let's uh, let's take you off the stand and show you what's going on. Hey up. <sighs> okay, here we are. Um, as you can see, I mean, it's sort of pushing down on those brackets at an angle and the tires tires hard up against the wall. Um, there's no real way this can fall off. I suppose you could you could pull a wheel off, and you know maybe that'd maybe that'd do damage to the hook on the wall. Um, but I don't think so. I don't think it's very likely. And because the bike's at an angle, that pedal really tucks away as well. So I really do like the way this uh, stores the bike. Those handlebars are above head height, which is good. So I can walk underneath those handlebars, um, and I've got space for more more bicycles underneath this one yeah 
or whatever else I want to put underneath this. So all in all, I'm very, very happy with this. Um, I hope my instructions have been clear enough that uh, if you want to build these or buy them and put them up, then you can do so easy enough. It is just a bit of sheet metal bent in a vice with a few holes drilled in it. So, you know, it's a pretty easy thing for anyone to do. Okay, so I've got all three of these bikes mounted up on the wall now, so, um, you know. Uh, it makes getting in and out of the shed a little bit harder, because obviously there's a wheel right here. Uh, but, you know, I'm going to keep a bike down here. These these three bikes, um, what, these first two are my, my actually my dad's. Um, he, he went around a... A lot of Europe on this bike. I've I've stuck chunky tires in it and stuff since. And the other one was his OAP triathlon bike. <laughs> you know, what what a legend. Uh, then the uh, the one at the top of the back there. That's uh, you know, probably the only nice bike I have. But I do have a lot of bikes. Um, so I've got to get another another 15 bikes or so uh, in this shed. There's uh, there's five of them there already. Um, and then some of them are quite small, like old folders and that. Um, you know, like, you know, it's my it's my intention to eventually build a absolutely gargantuan canoe and fill it up with people and folding bikes, isn't it? And be truly amphibious, isn't it? I think that would be hilarious. But um, you know, that's not quite happened yet. But I've started stockpiling folding bikes anyway. So uh, so what? Uh, I probably won't make a video on my other storage solutions. Um, and I've got to get other stuff in here as well, like the kids' paddling pool and whatnot. So um, most likely what I'll do is put a, put a couple of rails up along this wall and then the, the bikes that I'm not getting out on a regular basis, they'll hang from that, I suppose, by their either by their wheels or their handlebars. And what would probably make the most sense is to alternate them so they go, you know, handlebar wheel, handlebar wheel. I mean, you know, that's, that's going to... Those would be for bike, bikes that I'm, I'm not going to use all the time. That red bike's actually the one I use the most. It's my my old post office bike. It's just a cruiser, I suppose. I, I go to the pub on that, you know. Uh, <laughs> uh, that one I got specifically for modifying. I've got a um, Shimano, oh, the 11 speed hub. Um, all fine, all fine. <laughs> yeah. But it's the computer shift model, so I, I wanted to try and actually make a Shimano all find that shifted properly using the computer shift hub, but shift it manually, which is which is something I'm working with at the minute actually. But you know that's my dad's triathlon bike, and <laughs> that's his uh, that's his um, adventuring bike that I've bastardized quite badly. I just turned it into a grown-up's BMX basically. Um, another project hybrid that I was hoping to put drop bars on and whatnot eventually and using the winter time uh, that's it that's my um bicycle storage mechanism um solution I suppose so there's pros and cons to this isn't it I think um these two bikes will fit on each other's brackets but this mountain bike wouldn't be too happy on the um on the brackets for the road bikes you know because the the spacing, all, all the uh, you know the the distance between the three points is different. So I suppose what I'm saying is that these using this sort of brackets is a bit bicycle bicycle specific, if you like, you know. So you, that's one of the cons. You know, you can't put different bikes on these brackets, or you know, within reason. You can only put one bike on there. Um, as opposed to the big hooks that stick out the wall, um, you could you could quite easily make hooks that fold into the wall that you could get two bikes on maybe that wouldn't be bicycle specific. So you could put different bikes on them as long as they had a horizontal top top tube uh, crossbar or whatever. Um, but that stick out a lot further. This this is nice. I mean the the, the fact that the bikes are at an angle really keeps that uh, outside pedal tucked in. And most of the other bike storage solutions I've seen involve, you know, like I'm planning on doing on this wall, having having the handlebars or wheels uh, gripped in some way, shape, or form, and so the whole bike would stick out. So I think these these are probably you know probably about the best solution for just putting one specific bike on the wall. So if you only have one bike and you want to, you know, you're in a flat or something like that, I can't. 
I can't see there being many better ways of doing it than, than these brackets, you know, and they're really easy to make as well. So, uh, yeah, <laughs> give it a go. And um, what? Well, it's not very hard at all. You get your bike out of the way then, can't you? All right, folks. Okay. Uh, you know, if you can like and uh, like and share this video, uh, I'd appreciate it as always. And I'll, I'll catch you all again soon. Bye bye.